Today we have a guest speaker, Reverend Dolores Voorhees is with us. You may know her from the Barbara King Center, International Hillside International Truth Center. She was a senior minister there for a number of years. You may know her from TV. You may know her from her, her, her talks here. You may know her from just about anywhere. Please <laughs> welcome Dolores Voorhees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you this morning? Oh, I like that. I like that. See, I like people to talk back to me. Let me know you're here. Well, this morning I'm going to start by telling you why I'm dressed in purple. <laughs> in Unity, Charles Fillmore, one of the co-founders of Unity, wrote a book called The Twelve Powers of Man. And in that book, he talked about what he called spiritual faculties. And there are 12 of them. And we know we recognize the number 12 in the Bible. We had the 12 tribes of Jacob or the 12 sons of Jacob. Jesus had 12 disciples. And so what unity did with the powers of man, they attributed one power to each month. They gave it a, a physical location in the body and a color. So this month is May. This is the month of power. And the physical center in the body is the throat or the root of the tongue. And the color associated with this month is purple. So usually on the first Sunday, if you see me anywhere, I've got on, quote, unquote, the color of the month. But what's important about this is power is something that we all have. Sometimes we forget it. Sometimes we don't recognize our power. Sometimes we give it away. We choose to let others have the power in our lives. But one of the things that I want you to realize more than anything else, your words have power. Jesus said that the words he spoke were spirit and life. Scripture also tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and ye shall eat the fruit thereof. It also tells us by your words you are justified, and by your words you are condemned. So whatever you do, think about what you're saying. You can't jest. You can't play with your words. Your subconscious mind hears everything you say. And your subconscious mind works on what you say. So we've got to be careful with our words. We've got to be very careful with our words. And we can use our words at any time to bless and to heal. We're talking about healing today. We can pray for someone and they can be on the other side of the world. But when we send that vibration out, when that word comes out of our mouth, that throat starts to vibrate at the root of the tongue, it sends out energy. And everything is energy. So your word goes out into the universe. You can heal and send prayers and blessings to anyone, anywhere, at any time. You can even bless those on the other side. But use your word with love, with understanding, lifting up, protecting, praising, but use it good. Because the other thing about words and our consciousness and whatever goes on in our life, everything we say, everything we think, everything we feel is all centered in the body temple. It's all centered in our body temple. And even though I may be talking about Mary Jo down the street, 
or think I'm talking about Mary Jo down the street, my body doesn't recognize it. It says, oh, Dolores said this. Dolores said that. That's what she wants. So I've got to get busy giving her what she wants. And we sometimes wonder where the chaos and confusion comes in our life. But we haven't been mindful of what we're saying and what we're speaking. So today we want to talk about healing because there's so much going on in the universe and there's so much illness going on. And we, I, I know every one of us has a loved one that's experiencing something or we're experiencing something going on in our body temple. Or sometimes healing is not only in our body, but in our finances, in our relationships. All of it needs healing. But as we begin to look at healing and what that means, healing means wholeness. That's what we're really talking about. When we start talking about being healed, we're talking about we want to be whole. We want this body temple to reflect our divine inheritance because we're made in the image and after the likeness of God. And that's what we want our body temples to reflect. So as we start to look at healing, I love the scripture that uh, Dr. Paul chose for today, the scripture that we just read. But I wanted to look at something that's found in the book of Mark. And I'm not going to read it all because it's, it's a little lengthy. But I just want to paraphrase. Jesus had been teaching, and he decided to get on in the boat and go to the other side. And as he got off the boat, Jarius, who was a leader in the synagogue, came to him and said, Will you please come with me? My daughter is sick. I know if you lay your hands on her, you can heal her. So Jesus is walking with him, and then the crowd starts to follow and in the crowd, he feels someone push up against him and kind of touch his garment. And he turns around and he says, who touched me? And the disciples are looking at him like, well, Jesus, with all these people around you, and they're all pushing you, well, how, why are you saying, who touched me? But he felt that tug on his garment. He knew that soul was calling for that healing presence, was asking for that presence that he had within him. And the lady spoke up and she said it was me. She had had an issue of blood for 12 years and she couldn't be healed. She had been to all the doctors. She spent all her money and she still wasn't healed. But she had the faith to believe if she just could reach that Christ presence, she could be healed. Now, that's a literal kind of story. But what that's saying to us, any time we use our faith to believe and not waver in our belief, know that that presence and that power of God is everywhere evenly present. There's no spot where God is not. You can never be outside of that presence. You can never be outside of that power. God is all there is. There is nothing else. When you hold to that, you're touching that Christ presence. You're touching that wholeness. And it has an opportunity to work in your body. And so as this takes place, as they're going, he's still going to Jarius' house to see his daughter. And while they're on their way, the servant comes and says, there's no need to bother the teacher. She's already dead. And Jesus said, don't pay any attention to that. Let's go. So he goes to the house. They're crying, wailing. He puts everybody out, except for the mother and the father. He takes with him the mother, the father, Peter, James, and John. Now, scripturally or metaphysically, Peter, James, and John represent Faith, wisdom, and love. 
So anytime you've got something going on in your experience, take your faith with you. Remember, love is everywhere, even in present. And take John, wisdom, your connection with God. Not what you think in your own head. Not what you've been told by other people. But that connection you have with the spirit within that gives you guidance and direction in every situation. Because we all have it. And anytime Jesus was doing anything in particular, really where he was using his energy, he always had Peter, James, and John. When he had his transformation, he had Peter, James, and John. So this is an example. Is that me moving? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I hear something. And that's not spirit. I know spirit when spirit talks to them. So here we have him heading to this house. He puts out every, puts everybody out. And he takes the mother and the father, Peter, James, and John, and goes into the room, takes the little girl by the hand, and tells her to get up. And the little girl gets up. And he tells her parents, feed her, she's hungry. Everything that Jesus did was so simple. It really was. There was no big fanfare. He just spoke some words of truth and principle. And those truths and those principles apply to us. And these things that he did, we can do also. Because let's look at faith. Faith is your ability to say yes to spirit. Faith is your ability to draw your good from the invisible to the visible. Belief is the activator of faith. What do you believe? We have to ask ourselves that question from time to time. What do I really believe? I know what I said. I know what I heard. But what do I believe? Because what we believe is operating on our subconscious mind and causing things to take place. He took love with him. Love is the ability to know oneness with all. Love is the ability to desire that only good comes to all. Love is a magnet. It draws to it all good. Love is a harmonizer. It balances everything out. So, so we have faith, we have love, and we have wisdom. And wisdom is our ability to discern, to evaluate, and make decisions. Wisdom has two functions, drawing upon spirit for guidance and for making conclusions. And the truth is, whatever we have going on in our body is an appearance. The truth about you is that you're whole, complete, and lacking in nothing. That's the truth of you spiritually. That's the image and the likeness you were made after. Whole, perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. So, I talked to you about our power and our ability to speak words. We have to speak to ourselves, speak to our body, love ourselves. Have you all ever done a mirror treatment? Anybody ever heard of that? Some people have. You look in the mirror, look into your eyes, and say your name. And I love you. That would be like me looking in the mirror and saying, Dolores, Dolores, I love you. And do you know that that's difficult for some people to do? That's very difficult for some people to do. Because they've listened to so many negative things that they've been taught as they were growing up. 
and they bought into it and they think they healed it or they think they're over it, but it's subconsciously buried and they still feel it and they're still, still dealing with the repercussions of it. But if you look into a mirror and say, oh, John, I love you, and just keep saying it, something's going to come up in you. I remember the first time I did it. I kept saying it, and then I just broke down in tears. I mean, I blew dry. The more I kept doing it every day, and the more I kept saying, Dolores, I love you, the more I kept seeing changes take place in my life. I saw things happening for the good. I saw the synchronicity of spirit taking place. I think something, something good would happen to me. Course in Miracles says that all disease is based on unforgiveness. And you know, that's hard, that's a hard pill to swallow, especially if you got something going on in your body. You're like, unforgiveness. And you think about the thing, the situation, the person who did something to you to harm you in some way. And it may have been the most awful situation you ever had to deal with. And you want me to forgive them? Forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you. It's for me. Forgiveness sets us free. Why? Back to what I said. Everything that goes on in our experience is based on our consciousness. So when I say, I forgive you, I release you, I let you go, I no longer allow you to have any effect on me or in my life. And then sometimes it might, it might be really rough. It might be really rough and you can't say, I forgive you. But we can be like Jesus. Jesus said, the works that I do. I didn't do it. It's the Father in me that does the work. So if you can't say, I forgive whoever or whatever, say, Father in me, do the work. You forgive. I can't do it. Of my human self, I cannot do it. But I know you can. So you do it through me. You do it for me. Because when we do we set ourselves free. You take away the sting. They can no longer bother you. That whatever happened way back then can no longer affect you. Give it up. Get rid of it. Release it. Forgive yourself. Love yourself. You know what I love? This infinite intelligence we call God has made each and every one of us an individual presence and power. That intelligence thought so much of us that it never made another one like us. All the billions of people on this planet and no one else on this planet has a fingerprint like you. That's how unique, how beautiful, and how wonderful you are. I don't care what they told you. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. You are a unique, individualized expression of God. I have an affirmation on my mirror that says, I am God expressing as Dolores in all my glory, beauty, and magnificence. What if you said that every day? I am God expressing as whatever your name is in all my glory, beauty, and magnificence. It's going to shift. Remember we said everything is energy? When we vibrate in certain ways, we release certain chemicals in our body. 
and they can either be happy chemicals, if you want to call them happy, or sad chemicals. But what would you choose to release? Those happy ones start working and trickling all down and going through you and start shifting things and bringing things in balance and putting things in order. But we have to realize who we are, whose we are. We say it. We're good with the word. Oh, we real, we get, we get it quick. We can repeat it. But do we mean it? Do we feel it? Does everything we say and do align with it? You are a unique expression of God. You are beautiful. There is no one else like you. God thought that much of you. Not even twins. Not even identical twins. Twins that split from the same cell don't have the same fingerprint. You're that unique. You're that special. And I want you to get that today. There's no one else in the universe like you. You're wonderful. I don't care what you've heard. I don't care what judgment has been placed on you. It only affects you when you buy into it. When you accept that as the truth for yourself. And we don't have to accept any of that. So healing. Healing our body. Healing these cells. Loving yourself. Healing yourself. Touching yourself. Saying all is well. It's well in my mind. It's well in my body. It's well in my affairs. When we start talking to ourselves, think about it. Our cells renew themselves. I, I, I forgot what it, how often they do and how quickly they renew themselves. So if you're getting new cells constantly in your body, ask yourself, why am I creating the same disease? Because we haven't changed our consciousness. We haven't shifted in consciousness. It, we're giving the cells the same old pattern, and it's bringing back the same old disease. It's been bringing back the same old circumstance, bringing back the same situation. So as we begin to change our thinking, change the way we feel about ourselves, we begin to change our circumstance because energy follows thought. Energy follows thought. Now, I want to do something with you. You know, after I read uh, the scripture that was on the program, I said, hmm, wish I'd have brought my oil. I'd have anointed you all with oil this morning. <laughs> but I want to do this because energy does follow thought. And we've got to start practicing certain things to make shifts and changes in our lives. We just can't get up and keep doing the same old thing the same old way we've always done it. We've got to do something new. If you want something different, you've got to do something new and different. So since we know everything is energy, and we know that God is energy, God is here, God is present in us, through us, as us, all around us, I want to do a healing treatment, if you so I'm going to ask you to use your imagination. If you'd like, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, because usually when you close your eyes, you can imagine a little bit better than you can with your eyes open. But in our body temple, there are energy centers. And above the crown of our head, there's an eighth center. of you. So I want you to start about 16 inches over your head. I want you to imagine a bright, white, clear light. And see this pure white light moving down slowly, kind of in a swirl, coming down to the crown of your head. See this white light touching the crown of your head. It's a love light. 
and see this love light slowly coming into your head, filling up all the space till your head is all aglow. And then see it coming down through your throat. And now your throat is And it moves down to your shoulders and out to your arms. And it slowly starts coming down your chest. It's surrounding your heart. Your heart is all the light, all the cells are flowing. And it's moving down to your solar plexus, to that cell. And it's lighting up every cell in your body is alive and alight with the presence and power of God. And that light, it continues to move down through your abdomen and down to the lower regions of your body, moving down to your hips. And that light, it's a soothing light all the cells. Let it move down through your legs, through your thighs, through your knees and your joints, down through your kidneys. Every cell I've been alive. Moving down through your ankle. Moving through every cell in your body. This is the pure light. And that white light is healing, harmonizing, and bringing into divine order everything. Everything. All of it. In prayer, Dr. David read, prayer of faith. God is my health. I can't be sick. God is my strength unfailing quick. God is my all. I know no fear. Since God and love and truth. You can do that anytime you want to do that. Anywhere you have a few minutes to sit. You can visualize that white light coming down through your body, harmonizing and healing every cell in your body, moving through you, and know and declare all that God is. I adapted something. I know you all read 365 days of Richard Living, and I, you know, when I wrote this down, I didn't write down what day it came from. But I kind of shifted it anyway, so I'm going to go with it. It says, the health of spirit is my health today. My body is the temple of the living God. I rest in the assurance that the, my, wait a minute, I can't read my own home, right? that the omniscience and omnipotence of spirit are maintaining my body in perfect wholeness. I'm going to read that again. My body is the temple of the living God. I rest in the assurance that the omniscience and omnipotence of spirit are maintaining my body in perfect hope. I focus my attention on the all-knowing presence, the one power, and let the shining light of love move through my mental and emotional system, dissolving false beliefs, and healing error pattern that I have created. There is no lack of health in my body, for the presence of spirit is in every cell and function. And where spirit is, all is health. My consciousness is filled with healthy thoughts about myself and humankind. Dr. David, what I gave you, and I want you to affirm this with me. I am strong, vital, and perfect in every way, for I am a spiritual being living in a spiritually created body that responds to my thought. I think health, I appreciate health, 
I love health. I love good health. My whole being responds to this truth. The health of spirit is my health today. Living in the now. Living in the today. And know that there's no difficulty in spirit. There's no level of difficulty. Have you ever noticed that we say things are big, things are small, things are hard, things are easy? In spirit, there is no difficult. There is no easy. It just is. It just is. And it's all good and very good. So focus on your body. Focus on that light body moving through you. Work on your thoughts and your feelings. Look at your relationships. Maybe sometimes it's a relationship that needs healing. Do the same thing. Know that there's harmony and peace within that relationship. Know that as you do these things, even if you're in a relationship where there's discord and your partner may not give a fly and flip about what you're talking about, you keep working the principle. They're going to do one or two things. They're going to rise up with you or they're going to get out your way. They're going to move on. And if they move on, they need to go. I don't know what to tell you. If you're working with spirit, okay. If you're working with spirit, everything will be balanced and harmonized. If the relationship is not for your highest good and greatest joy, why would you want it anyway? So if it's for your highest good and greatest joy, then what you're doing is going to bring harmony and peace and joy and love and fun into the relationship. If they move, bless them. But you know what? They just made room for something better. That's the only way I've ever seen God work. Whenever something moves out, I always get something better. So I'm looking for the better. Now, don't let anybody go home and get rid of your partner, okay? Said Reverend Dolores said that. Don't don't blame. Uh -uh, don't blame me for that. Do not blame me for that. I'm telling you how to be in tune with spirit. And if spirit is guiding you, you'll know what to do. You'll know what to say in any situation. The same thing with your money. Do you bless your money? Yeah. Whenever you look at what Jesus did, first of all, he had faith. He blessed it, and he gave thanks for it. So whatever the source of your income is, whatever money substance you have, do you bless it? I'll tell you, and now if I were to show you in my pocketbook right now, I have three checkbooks. And each one of those checkbooks, I have an information, uh, I mean, uh, affirmation on a sticky tab attached to my checkbook. Every time I open it, I see it. I bless it. I send it out. I don't worry about it because I know it's coming back. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's coming back to me blessed and multiplied. But that comes with trusting, believing, and knowing that the power in the presence of God is all good. Now, occasionally, I don't, usually bring this up, but every now and then I'll hear people talking about the evil and the devil. Okay. Dave, Dr. David, will you do something for me? Type in evil and underneath it, type in devil. And then across from each one, I want you to spell evil backwards and devil backwards. I want you all to see something. When she gets that up there. But if you write it down, you'll see. Anytime you're experiencing evil, 
or a devil, you're living backwards. Do you see that? If some of you have written it down on a piece of paper. Do you see that? Anytime you're experiencing either one of those first two, You're living backwards. You're not in alignment with spirit. You're not in alignment with principle. So you need to check your consciousness, see what you need to shift, see what you need to change. There is no presence. There is no evil. There is no devil other than one you can create in your own mind. If God is everywhere evenly present, there's no spot where God is not, then how can that be? So don't blame what's going on in your life on that or on someone else. It's our opportunity to check ourselves and check our consciousness. Because healing and wholeness comes from within. Everything that we have in our experience comes from within. And this is the most challenging part of new thought because we can't put the blame on something or someone else. Michael Jackson wrote a song called Man in the Mirror. Take a look at the man or woman in the mirror and make that change. So if you don't like what you're seeing in your experience, actually it's the mirror of your conscience. That's a hard pill to swallow. You know, I tell people, I don't bite, but I might step on your toe. But I do it in love because I want you to get the principle. I want you to understand. I so know that your lives can be changed. I so know that your bodies can be healed. I so know that your finances can be healed. I so know that this world, your world, can be so much better when you shift your consciousness and align your thinking with So I've got one last affirmation I'm going to read. The cells of my body shout for joy as they resurrect into new life. God's powerful healing presence touches every atom of my being, calling forth a radiant wholeness, and I am healed. Thank you. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And so it is. Thank you.